Hello everybody, my name is Faethodas. Welcome to this video. This is uh, the first video for this channel for the season 10 of Diablo 3. This is a very nice season because uh, with this season or actually before the season we had the 2.5.0 patch which gave us this uh, amazing feature, the armory and uh, this uh, tab here for our crafting materials so what are we going to do in this video I'm going for this season I'm going to try and complete one of the conquests which is the years of war conquest here we have it he years of war reach greater rift level 55 solo with the full bonuses of six of the following class sets and here we have 24 uh, sets all the sets of the game i have completed uh, one one set the might of the earth it is uh, the barbarian set and uh, i'm going to complete five uh, more times this uh, 55 uh, solo requirement so I can uh, complete this years of war conquest which means I'm going to create uh, five more videos which I will show you the actual uh, gameplay of uh, myself conquering uh, the 55 solo with different sets and uh, also those videos will be a small build guide each one of them First I will show you the build I used, I, I'm going to use and then I will show you the actual uh, gameplay. So since I have already defeated once the Might of the Earth set, I will show you the build and I will go and do one uh, Grift 55 so you can see how it performs in the 55 Greater Rift. So this build requires the Might of the Earth set. I'm using all, all six items, the boots, the pads, the gloves, the shoulders, the helm and uh, the chest armor. As you can see, some of my red gems are not maxed out, but it doesn't really matter. My belt is the girdle of giants. I'm using this one because when using seismic slam it increases earthquake damage by up to 100% for 3 seconds. So in this build I'm using the seismic slam attack. So when I'm using uh, this uh, attack, as you can see here, here it is, we get this boost to our earthquake damage because of this uh, belt. Also, the rings I'm using is the Bad of Might because after casting uh, some uh, skills, including Leap, we take 55% reduced damage for 8 seconds. So, if I Leap once, as you can see here, the reduced damage taken. The other ring is the Convention of Elements, which gives up to 200% uh, increased damage to one of the elements. The amulet I'm using is an irrelevant amulet. It is a Blackthorns amulet. This amulet is uh, very good, but uh, it is not anything special. It uh, does uh, the work for now. It is useful for 55 uh, level greater rift. It helps very much. I cannot complain. The bracers I'm using is the seismic slam deals. <coughs> Sorry. Is the bracers of destruction, which has the power seismic slam deals up to <coughs> 400 percent increased damage to the first five enemies it hits <coughs> I'm using this one just to boost a little bit my seismic slam damage uh, the most important uh, item 
On this game, one could say that it is the weapon we are using, because the damage output is the most important thing. So I'm using the Blade of the Tribes. Because this one has a legendary power, Warcry and Threatening South cause an avalanche and earthquake. So, with uh, this set, the, we have uh, reduced cooldowns of Earthquake, Avalanche, Leap and Ground Stomp. Also, Leap uh, causes an earthquake when you land. And uh, Leap gains the effect of the Iron Impact uh, Rune and the Rune's effect and duration are increased by 150%. Also, the 6 set uh, bonus gives more damage to the Earthquake, Avalanche, Leap, Ground, Stop and CSPR at Seismic Slam by 1200%. Now, in the cube, I have uh, put in the weapon slot the furnace for uh, 50 more, 50% 50 more damage against the leech. The loot shocks because with this one we can cast uh, leap up to three times within two seconds before the cooldown begins. So we can have three leaps instead of one. One, two, three. And as you can see, the leap gives. Uh, each uh, leap uh, creates an earthquake where we land, so it helps with the damage output also. It is a mobility and uh, offensive type of skill, a combination. Let's call it this way. And the third item on the cube is the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. Reduce the remaining cooldown of one of your skills by one second when you hit with a resource spending attack. Now, this is important. I also use uh, in the helm a diamond gem for more cooldowns. This is important because when we leap, for example, you see the cooldown here, but if we use the slam, you see how fast it refreshes. So, we need this one just to be able to leap even more. Now, it also, of course, it uh, helps with the other skills, the cooldowns of the other, the other skills too. Now, for the skills, we have the leap with the Call of Ariat uh, rune. We have the war cry with the veteran's warning rune, which gives uh, more uh, dodge sense. We have the sprint with the marathon rune because we want to to run even faster for four seconds, forty percent faster. The threatening shout with the falter uh, rune. And uh, when we use this out, the, da the enemies take more damage for 6 seconds from all sources. The seismic slam, but in this one we use the, st the stagger uh, rune, because this one uh, reduces the cost to 22 fury of the seismic slam. So we can cast more seismic slams. As you can see, and this is uh, happening because for the cooldowns, as I showed you before, if we want to have to help with the cooldown of our skills, we need to cast the seismic slam many times. So this one, this rune stagger helps very much with uh, this thing. And last but not least, the earthquake skill. Chuck with the rune Molten Fury, which shake the ground uh, violently, dealing 6000% weapon damage as fire over 8 seconds to all enemies within 18 yards. Very powerful. So, the passive skills are the Superstition, reduces non-physical damage by 20%. We want this one because we need some defenses too, to stay alive. The Earth and Might, which uh, gain 30 Fury when Avalanche or Earthquake is triggered. The Animosity, because it increases all Fury generation by 10%, it increases the maximum Fury by 20, we need this one. And the Unforgiving, because 
with this skill we no longer degenerate fury, instead we generate two fury every one second. So, every time I leap, I deal earthquake. Every time I'm using war cry, I deal earthquake at the avalanche. Every time I'm using threatening south, I'm dealing earthquake at avalanche because of this weapon. Also, as we saw in this passive skill, we gain 30 fury when avalanche or earthquake is triggered, which means we gain fury when we use the threatening south, when you, we use the war cry, and uh, we gain fury from the leap too. Let's see. The cooldowns are getting... Chuck. The leap also gives us fury. So this is the build. It is a simple build. Nothing spectacular. Nothing special. So now I'm going to show you an actual gameplay of this build on 55 level Greater Rift which is a torment 12 equivalent um, I could uh, create it I will make it empowered okay let's do it uh, wrong move ah oh, they do not let me pass Everybody's dead, we move on, nice. One more elite, very nice. He will die. As we can see, we need some defenses, some defensive skills also. Good, very good. Move on. As you can see, my Paragon level is uh, 639, but it isn't necessary to be that high, which is not high actually, but anyway, <coughs> in Paragon level to be able to defeat 55 Greater uh, Rift. This uh, level, 55 Greater uh, Rift, is not high, it is a medium level, so it is not important to have so many Paragon po uh, levels. We, you can defeat this uh, 55 level solo by being uh, 350 or 400 Paragon levels, it is enough. Anybody else? No. Oh, Elite! How did I miss this Elite? Come on, Horror! Fat Horrors! Come on, come on! Good, good, good! Oh, too many people! One more elite, very nice. This rift is good. It has lots of people to die and uh, enough elites. Yes, you need more time, I know that. Please do your job and stop complaining all the time. You need more time. Se digo tha mas piso tisi ki overbertent. You wield against my blow. Come on. Oh yeah. Let's run. 
This is not a dead dead. Oh, shield! Ah, I would like a conduit better. <clears throat> Not ready yet, not ready yet. Yes, come on, where are the elites? There they are. Oh, elites, oh. More elites, yeah. By the way, this is my favorite set of Barbarian because it deals... Uh, it deals... Uh, it is a very nice and very fun actually set to play. I like the how it leaps and uh, creates earthquakes everywhere. Very fun set. I like these Roy B uh, things bringing the destruction to my enemies and uh, this set feels very powerful let's go a couple of elites please This is not nice. Yes, there they are. Come on. It's time for you to go to sleep forever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One Earthquake for our Crusader King. More Earthquakes for our Crusader King. So, there we go. Picking up the items of the floor. So, guys, this is it. This is how I completed the first uh, one of the six requirements with uh, the set Might of Earth for the conquest Years of War on Season 10. This is it, Might of the Earth. So, in the next Diablo video, for this season, I'm going to do the same thing. I will show you a build of another set. I will not tell you yet which set will be. And uh, I will show you a build, a typical build, and uh, the actual gameplay of uh, the 55 Great Rift solo. So, because uh, we need uh, six sets, six class sets, to complete this conquest and each class has only four sets I'm going to use three sets of uh, Barbarian and three sets of the Monk class in this season I play Barbarian but I created a Monk just to be able to play to complete this conquest years of war so thanks for watching Subscribe to stay updated if you like this video with the next videos that are coming for Diablo 3 on season 10 on this channel. Hit the like button if you like this video. If you want to write a comment, write a comment, ask uh, questions, ideas, anything you want to say. Troll me a little bit. And uh, I will see you in the next video for this conquest conquest very soon. Bye for now.